Hello everyone, welcome to Screen Screen on Viola. In today's episode, we're going to talk about movies I have seen, and I think it's must to recommend them to you. So without further ado, let's listen to the first new movie we're going to talk about today: Lost Illusions. Story of the rise and the fall of a young man in Paris who dreamed to be a writer and became a journalist. Lucien de Rubempré, pour vous servir. The first new movie we're going to talk about today is a French film. It's adapted from a famous French writer Balzac's novel of the same name. Directed by Javier Ginoli, starred the legendary Jehad Depardieu. Canadian talented actor director Javier Dolan and French star Vincent Lacoste. Speaking of Javier Dolan, I have to admit that I didn't know who he is before I watched Lost Illusions. But his character in the movie was my favorite character. And after watching the movie, I went online to Google him, and then realized, wow, he really is hot. I mean, he is handsome in the movie, but the movie's background is set in French, like several hundred years ago. So the style is pretty different. But he himself is really handsome, and he's very talented. That he got nominated and even won several Cannes Film Festival awards. As we heard in the introduction, protagonist is someone who wants to become an author in French. But one day he starts to write controversial articles in kind of revenges for what the society has done to him as a small figure. During the process, he starts to figure out that Paris is a place that anything can be sold. Things, of course, can be sold, but even people can be sold. I mean, not like、uh, trafficking, but all the services that you can think of. So whether he can find his dream in Paris or not, or his dream is going to disappear, is what we need to find out at the theater ourselves. I always love novel adaptations, and especially this one. I guess it's because I personally write a lot, and I love reading. So while watching this movie. I can relate to the characters in the movie. That if you really want to, well, even if you don't like film, maybe you just want to enjoy writing. You still need to sacrifice some of your values. But whether you can stay true to yourself is the key to success. But of course, compared to other blockbusters, Lost Illusions can be considered as an artistic. Movie. So, if you are interested in French works or artistic works, Lost Illusions is the movie I recommend for you. And the second new movie we're going to talk about today is going to be a blockbuster. Let's check it out. The Batman. When the Riddler, a sadistic serial killer, begins murdering key political figures in Gotham, Batman is forced to investigate the city's hidden corruption and question his family's involvement. Get out of here. Yes, the second new movie we're going to talk about today is The Batman. Of course, we're going to talk about it. Well, as long as DC doesn't screw up, we probably would introduce it. When it comes to The Batman, everyone thinks of Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight trilogy, but this reboot was directed by director Matt Reeves. Written by Matt Reeves and Peter Craig, and of course, it's adapted from the DC Comics character of the same name. If you know me, you would know that I'm a Marvel person. I know nothing about DC, and I have no interest in DC at all. But I planned to watch this movie. Well, I went to a screening eventually, but I planned to watch it because. Robert Pattinson is the Batman, and a lot of fans probably already heard this. Robert Pattinson said, "If the Batman doesn't succeed, he's going to film adult movies." And after the success of the Batman, actually, a lot of people say that they're actually disappointed. But we're glad that Robert Pattinson's career isn't a failure. The story of this reboot is about a murderer kills a lot of elite in Gotham 
with a series of cruel tricks. And if you know Batman, you will know that he has a nickname called World's Greatest Detective. So he follows these mysterious clues to investigate the underground movement. During the process, he also meets Catwoman, the Penguin, Carmine Falcone, and the Riddler himself. So I'm not sure whether this is going to be the new DC Expense universe, but as long as Robert Pattinson is the new Batman, it's all worth it. And so we can see how the Batman and Catwoman beat the Riddler together in this latest reboot. Oh, and I forgot to mention Batman's allies. In addition to his main foes, he's going to cooperate with a few allies that he can actually trust, including Alfred and James Gordon. So basically, I think this movie is suitable for everyone. Even if you're not familiar with DC like me, you can enjoy this movie. And although Robert Pattinson's under the mask of the Batman, he doesn't really reveal his handsome faces a lot. You can still enjoy his performance as this freak. And now it's our time to move on to Top 007. Before that, let's review what we had from last week first. There were two top threes, Marry Me and Moonfall. Top two was Uncharted. And top one was Death on the Nile. Let's listen to top seven to top four this week. Top six, Black Line. You name it, I've probably done it. Jack asked forever. Welcome to Jack. Three, two, one. Top five, Revolution of Our Time. They won't know my name. Spider Man, No Way Home. We started getting some visitors. Top four. I need to get back in the game, sir. You want to get back in the game? Prove it. Sergeant Rodriguez was a legend. Family funeral Sunday. Wow, it's a little bit crowded. Since I mentioned in the beginning that today I'm going to talk about movies I've seen, there are only two choices. It's either Revolution of Our Times or Spider-Man No Way Home. But we've talked about Spider-Man No Way Home for many times. So today I want to talk about Revolution of Our Times once again. As you may know, this documentary is about the revolution taking place in Hong Kong three years ago. Wow, it's already three years ago and it was stopped because of COVID-19. So some conspiracists even say that the Chinese government created COVID-19 virus to stop this revolution, but I don't think that's the case. Still, while watching the documentary, you will wonder, wait, I did follow the news during that period of time, but it's really shocking when you see the actual scenes from the camera lenses on site. All the blood, conflicts, fights. Really hard to imagine it actually happened three years ago. Since it's already three years ago, I already forget about some of the scenes. But you know, for those who actually experienced that, they will never forget. And it's very important history. So it's really precious that the director recorded this event of history for people around the world. And actually, Taiwan is the only country, or if you don't think it's a country, the only free land to play this documentary in the theater with profits. Because in other countries, it was only played during film festivals. So I do encourage everyone no matter what side you're on, you should go watch Revolution of Our Times because it really isn't something you can watch every day. And now it's time for top 3 to top 1. Top 3, Jujutsu Kaisen Zero, the movie. Top 2, Death on the Nile. When you have money, no one is ever really your friend. It's too late. Top 1. Uncharted. They're not gone. They're just lost. Okay, in the last section, I'm going to break my promise. I said that I'm going to talk about movies that I have seen. 
but actually top three to top one, none of them I've seen. Well, one of my friends asked me to watch Death on the Nile this week, but I was going to cook that day, so I refused. But anyway, I'm going to talk about Jujutsu Kaisen Zero once again. Jujutsu Kaisen Zero, the movie, is the prequel to the anime, and actually, it was released in Japan during Christmas last year. And at the time, the box office was amazing. Just the first weekend, it attracted almost one million nine hundred and ten thousand people. It was the movie with the highest box office. In Japan that weekend, with two billion six hundred and ninety-four million one thousand and twenty thousand yen. I don't know how much that is in dollars, but it's really amazing. The satisfaction of the audience after watching it was over ninety-eight percent. It means that among a hundred people who go watch it, only one or two people don't like it. And there's all over posts on social media. It received the second best box office in the first three days in Japanese film history. You may ask, so who's the best? It was Demon Slayer, Mugen Train. Both animes are very popular, but I guess Mugen Train is more popular because it's less scary. At least that's what my boyfriend told me. Like the Mugen Train is PG, but Jujutsu Kaisen is PG-13. So maybe that's part of the reason why it's only the second best, but it's still something. Usually when I say that I think Demon Slayer is scary, people would say, "What? No, it is not." Well, it is because just the first episode, when the protagonist sister. Who became a ghost wanted to eat him. That's scary enough because that's a jump scare. And also, the protagonist looking at his whole family being killed by the ghost is scary as well. And there's just more blood, even though it's fake blood. I still don't like it. And the ghosts look disgusting. That's the point. But at least it's just anime, so as long as it's not too scary, I don't think they're going to appear in my dreams, and that's fine. But most of the movies I recommend today are really something I've seen, and I recommend them from my heart. Hope you like the show today and go watch the movies I recommend you. Remember to come back to Screen Scream next week. I'm Viola. See you next week.